Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome to Chatomics. Today we are going to talk about uh, spreadsheet, uh, what they forget to teach you in using spreadsheet. So spreadsheets are so commonly used uh, for data analysis uh, for both web lab uh, people and also computational biologists. But at least in my experience, there's uh, a lot of uh, common problems that I encountered from the spreadsheet, either uh, download from the paper or I get from collaborators. So in this video, I'm going to show you some common problems that to avoid and some best practice to follow. Okay. So before I go into uh, talk, uh, spreadsheet, let's talk about tidy data. So tidy data is a concept that first was introduced by Harley Wickham in this paper. You can go to this uh, uh, paper to read it. But really there are several rules uh, to, to follow, make sure the data is tidy. So first, you want to put all your variables in columns. So those are the things that you're measuring, like weight, height, temperature. Second, you want to put each observation in its own row. Third, uh, don't combine multiple pieces of information in one cell. So in the later slide, I will have an example. Uh, fourth, uh, leave the raw data raw. So you can do uh, calculations uh, in Excel uh, for yourself, but when you uh, send data to your collaborators, make sure it's a raw data, don't do any calculation. Lastly, export the clean the data to a plain TXT based text based format such as TSV or CSV file. So to give you a concrete idea uh, what a tidy data look like, uh, here's an example. Okay, so here you have two strings, A and B. And for the string, you also have like normal versus mutants. And you have the uh, rapid kits here. So you have two values here. And you have uh, two different time points, one minute and five minutes. So this is non tidy data. So to, this is how tidy data look like. So you need to have another column name or variable name called genotype to record whether it's a normal string or mutant string. And you have a minute uh, variable or time point variable to denote whether it's now. Well, one minute or five minute, and because you have two replicates, then you have uh, one variable name called replicate one and two, and then the, the last column is the response, which is the the value itself. Okay, so this is an, another example of uh, non tidy data here. So here again, uh, you have four uh, three different time points here, but then you put them all in uh, into the uh, into the same actual. Uh, row here. So what you really need to do is to put this section under here and also put this section under here and add another new variable name called week to denote which time point is that. It's 4, 6, and 8. So this is the tidy data. So make the data tidy have uh, some really good eff uh, side effect. Uh, it makes our data analysis, the computational biologist's uh, life much easier. And also, mm, this tidy data format is uh, compatible with ggplot2, so we can really make uh, the figures uh, easily okay, using the tidy data. So here, there are some uh, other examples for non-tidy data. So you see the examples here. So the intrinsic problem is that they are not rectangular. So uh, make sure the data are rectangular. You have every cells that are filled in. Okay. For example, here, there should be no empty cells here. For example, in this example, you have this date uh, column, but then you have some empty values. Although this one may be the same as here, here, those two cells may be the same as here, but you really have to fill them out to make sure we don't make mistakes or we don't guess about that. Right. Actually, uh, in R, we can actually fill in those values if, after we, for example, confirm with the web biologist. Uh, so we know, okay, this should be the same as here, right? So those two should be the same as here. So in R, you can use uh, this package of tidy R and use the fill function. So this is raw data, and you have some NAs here. And you can use the fill function, and this column name year here, and it will fill by default from top to bottom. So, so those will be filled in as 2000, and those will be 2001, 2002, and 2004 here. So entering uh, more than one piece of information in a cell. So this is a very common problem as well. For example, here in this column, you have species uh, hyphen stacks. So those are two different uh, type, types of uh, information here. 
So, so what you can you need we need to do is to separate this into two columns: species and and sex, whether it's male or female. So in tidy I can use the separate function, and just call a name here, and separate into the new uh, new column name, and the separator will be the hyphen. Okay, using multiple tables, this is actually very common mistakes. At least I, I made this mistake when I was doing a lot of uh, wet lab experiments and, and record all my uh, uh, experiments values in a single uh, spreadsheet. So here, like there, uh, probably just like uh, different experiments performed uh, in the different dates. Okay, so but if you read this uh, spreadsheet into R or Python. Uh, really, the program doesn't know those are from different uh, experiments because it assumes each row will be uh, the same actual observation, which is not the case here. Okay, let's talk about the null values. So, if that value is not uh, not available, you should you should you should leave it as a blank as the best option. So, the other uh, good option is use uh, NA here. So you should never use zero because it's indistinguishable from a true zero, and the rest of them you should really avoid to use them. Okay. And the other really common problem is uh, use using formatting to convey information. So, for example, here you highlight this uh, cell in yellow to denote that okay, the, those devices are not calibrated. So to avoid that, because programs are in Python, they don't understand the meaning of those colors. So you really, uh, to avoid that, you add another column here and use yes or no to denote whether it's cal cal calibrated or not. Okay. So this is uh, another example. So for this uh, glucose value here, there's outlier here, 1.1, .1, then use this color to highlight it. Really to avoid uh, that, you use you add another column here called outlier. And use true or false to denote whether it's an outlier. Okay, uh, using pro programmatic field names, so when you choose the column names, make sure you use the good names like here. Uh, use underscore to separate uh, different words. Uh, good alternatives will be like uh, cam camel cases. And avoid using like, spaces between the words because most of programs actually they don't like um, strings with space. And those don't use like special characters of any kind in the column names. Okay, uh, you want to be really consistent, uh, meaning you want to be consistent with everything. For example, you want to be consistent with uh, the codes for ca categorical variables. Here, uh, for male, it could be like male, you spell it out, uh, but in lowercase, but you could also have one. And the first letter is uppercase, like male. Okay, you can even use that single letter M, right? It's fine to use any of them, but just make sure you use just pick one and stick to them, and make uh, use the same thing across within the single uh, spreadsheet and also across different data sets. And use consistent variable names here. So in this example, you may have this glucose underscore ten week as a one column name. But in a different uh, spreadsheet, maybe you want you have a different name meaning the same thing here. You um, so for example here you now you spell ten weeks spell it out instead instead of like ten wk here. Okay. Uh, lastly, use a consistent subject IDs. Uh, for example, here you have a mouse and this number one fifty three. But sometimes you can maybe you you may actually omit this mouse. Here and maybe use a hyphen, right? And sometimes well, even worse, like you use an uppercase for the first letter. Uh, so make sure you use consistent subject ID so you can match different subjects in across different data sets. And this is not really uncommon here in real life. Uh, even for some of the data sets, uh, the spreadsheet we receive from contract uh, research organizations in the company. They don't have like a consistent subject ID, so we can really not match different uh, subject, uh, the same subject from different uh, batches of data. Okay. Okay. And so write the date uh, dates as this format: year, month, and day. So this is the ISO eight six zero one standard, and this is really the correct way to 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 uh, write uh, states. 
And here only really the US using this month, day and year format here. Okay. Uh, also, one thing I want to tell you is that you really want to be cautious with Excel because it's known that uh, Excel will convert your gene names into dates because in some gene names, like for example, APR1 will be like converted to April 1, like SEP2 will be converted to sep September 2nd, something like that. And it's still very common actually in, in the spreadsheet that you download from public domain. Okay. Okay. So the take home message is that uh, it's not rocket science, uh, you, uh, but learning how to use spreadsheet uh, effectively will great, greatly actually benefit your research, avoid errors, and have a happy collaborator. At least when I receive a spreadsheet uh, that contains the tidy data I will be really happy because that makes my life much easier okay so here are the references uh, this is the data carpentry workshop and this is the paper uh, actually I used the examples from those two resources and put them in the in the deck okay so make uh, I will have the link of this spreadsheet uh, for, of this uh, presentation in the description of this video make sure you download it and you can go to the link and read it by yourself. Okay. Uh, okay, let's look at the real life example and uh, see what's the problems with this uh, spreadsheet. Okay. So this is a real example. So this is a spreadsheet I downloaded from a paper and uh, essentially this is the metadata of the patient. Uh, patient. So um, who, uh, um, who undergo uh, anti-PDL1 and the chemo uh, combo uh, treatment, and some other. There are some you see. There are some uh, empty values here, and there are some colors highlighting here, and you have uh, the plus and minus sign to denote whether it's uh, PDL1 treated or not, right? And but again, then you have this uh, small hyphen here to denote that maybe the data is not it's not available, right? So really, it's kind of problematic for us to really use this uh, spreadsheet. And I have to actually write some scripts to clean it up. So uh, actually, I have this blog post also linked in the in the slide and how show you how actually I tidied the spreadsheet. OK. OK, uh, that's it for today. I hope this video helps you. Um, to avoid some of the common mistakes problems that when you are using Excel and, for, and please follow the best practice and will make uh, your research much better. And make sure you subscribe to this channel, Chatomics, and I will see you next time. Happy learning.